Okay, this is the first Java tutorial of a collection of basic Java tutorials that I'm going to create. And in this tutorial, it focuses on installing the JDK or Java Development Kit on your computer, specifically for Windows XP. Now, the JDK is necessary because it allows you to run and compile Java programs without it you won't be able to do these things so you won't really be able to learn the Java language if you can't see what your programs do or if you've made any errors in them now the first thing we need to do is get the installation files now to get these we need to go to the official Java website java.son.com and we just go to downloads and java se which stands for standard edition now we can either click on get jdk download this will get us the latest download or if you scroll a bit further down there's a little description about the actual file we can also click on download there now just accept that and go back to the windows area if you're running another OS obviously don't download the windows files but this is what you need if you're running windows the offline and online installations overall are the same things but it's the offline installs downloads everything at once whereas the online installation downloads like a download manager that allows you to download it in parts but we'll just use the offline installation so something like this should come up just save it to disk so you can use it later and it starts downloading. Now I've already downloaded it so we can just cancel that and go back here and here's the file. So after you downloaded it just double click on it to run it and here we go. Now this is the same as installing any other software you've just got to be wary at a few points that you're doing correct stuff now just accept the license screen and here's the first thing you need to remember where you install the JDK to um, you can either just remember this path or you can change it to a more rememberable path which is what I'm going to do I'm just going to bung it in the uh, C drive and call it JDK. Okay, now that's going to install there. So I just need to remember that instead of that big long thing. Or of course you can write it down if you want. Just click next. Now the rest of this installation, you just click next the whole way, except any agreements that you have to do. So I'll come back when this is done. Okay, we're done installing the JDK. We just have to click on finish and we're done. Now I'd recommend you keep this file just in case your installation is corrupt or anything else happens to it and you have to reinstall for any reason. It just saves you downloading it again really. So just keep that. Now the most common misconception is that once you've installed this everything's going to work but unfortunately that's not the case those of you who've programmed before you'll know that compiling you need to do in command prompt just open up that now the command to compile in java is java c now you would think that this will work after we've downloaded and installed the JDK but as you can see it doesn't this is because it doesn't know where to look 
prompts for the Java C file. So we need to tell it. Now on Windows XP, which is the only operating system I'm going to show you how to do this on, you go to Start My Computer, right click on My Computer, and go to Properties. You then go to the Advanced tab, and then go down to Environment Variables. Now here, I would just say that you shouldn't edit any of your system variables unless you're following a guide or something because you can muck things up so up in the user variables we're going to tell it where to look for uh, this file java c when we're logged on as me so you need to look for the variable path. Now, if this isn't there, don't worry, like it's not here at the moment, we can just create a new variable and call it path. Now, if you already have a variable called path, then just highlight it and edit it, and you'll get something like this. Now, if you remember, we installed the JDK into the directory C JDK and now we need to direct it to the bin of that directory which is where all the important files are stored okay now we just need to put a semicolon at the end of that statement now on some machines you need to also enter this command which is just a period, a full stop which basically tells you that whichever directory you are in look here effectively don't need to know the nitty gritty details about that but just remember to put a semicolon there and if you're editing this path file and you've already got a uh, path there, let's just say it's C program files I don't know system if you've got that already there and you're adding these in remember to put a semicolon in between each path otherwise it doesn't know where one path starts and one path ends and it takes it all as one big path and that's bad Okay, so that's done. We've got the path to the bin of the JDK, and we've got the full stop, which tells the command prompt that it doesn't matter which directory you're in, you've got to look here. Okay, just click OK, just closing down that and that. Okay, the changes we just made don't work on command prompt windows that were already open before we made the changes they only affect new command prompt windows that are opened after the changes have been made so if we just exit this and open up a new one there we go if we type in the command java c we should see there we go all of its like parameters we can give it this if you see this doesn't mean much to you at the moment but that shows you it's working so there there we have it the JDK has been installed successfully on in your system if you have any problems doing this just add a comment on YouTube and we'll see if we can help but if you follow this carefully it should be should be okay so I hope you enjoyed it, or at least learned from it, and next time we'll show you how to use the JDK by compiling and running your own program. Okay.